The richest surrogate for Kamala Harris, billionaire business owner Mark Cuban, thinks conservative and independent women working for Trump are stupid and unaccomplished. Donald Trump, you never see him around strong, intelligent women, ever. It's just that simple. They're intimidating to him. He, does, he doesn't like to, to be challenged by them. Yeah, well, speaking of someone who has challenged him on many occasions, and I think he still respects my opinion, that's a really dumb comment. So just proving billionaires can be bozos as well, I guess, Mark. Well, here's a fact check for Mark doesn't have a clue Here's a small list of those uh, supposedly unintelligent women associated with Donald Trump. His wife, Melania... I don't know, does Mark Cuban speak five languages? His campaign manager, Susie Wiles, a seasoned political pro. America First Policy Institute chief, Brooke Rollins, brilliant. Linda McMahon, also with AFPI, former WWE exec, came up from nothing. Kellyanne Conway, of course, we all know Kellyanne. Governor Sarah Sanders, Kaylee McEnany, and the list goes on and on. Now, of course, Cuban was responding to comments made last night by former President Trump. If people told me about four weeks ago, I would say, no, I want to protect the people. I want to protect the women of our country. I want to protect the women. Sir, please don't say that. Why? They said, we think it's, we think it's very inappropriate for you to say something. I said, well, I'm going to do it whether the women like it or not. I'm going to protect them. I'm going to protect them from migrants coming in. I'm going to protect them from foreign countries that want to hit, it, hit us with missiles and lots of other things. Well, of course, it's clear what he means, that he would be a strong president. Yeah, a protector. The president's supposed to protect us, right? Protector of our borders, our economy, you know, and for all people, even for liberal female voters who don't support him now. And all the women I know, and yes, including Democrats, they do love men who are protectors. What do they think we want, men who break and can't fix things? Not attractive. Now, it's not sexist for men to want to protect women, and it's not weak for women wanting men to protect them. Sorry, it's natural. But when Harris is on the trail, she rarely seems natural, and she always seems like she's just reciting rehearsed lines. In this case, pretending to be offended by Trump, the protector. Did everyone hear what he just said yesterday? <laughs> that he will do what he wants, quote, and here's where I'm going to quote, whether the women like it or not. We must vote because this is the thing. You know, there's a saying that you got to listen to people when they tell you who you are, who they are. And this is not the first time he has told us who he is. He does not believe women should have the agency and authority to make decisions about their own bodies. Oh, their agency. Ooh, she sounds like a big lawyer lady there. Actually, she's just thoroughly unconvincing. It doesn't matter how much she laughs her way through her remarks. It doesn't matter that she claims to be a uniter who will work with both sides. None of that changes the fact that at her core, she is a divisive San Francisco radical. And w with her and her, you know call you a Nazi or a Hitler because what? She's going to do that because she can't defend her own agenda. Everything she did as VP hurt women. Her open borders, which let migrants in who abused, trafficked, raped, and even killed women and girls. Her inflation that robbed young women of the chance to buy a home. That forced senior women back into the workplace to afford daily life. That forced women to raid their 401ks. And yeah, her demonic trans agenda that forced women to compete against biological men in sports. And Kamala claims to be pro-choice, but when it comes to vehicles, her climate change mandates will give women no choice in automobiles. If Kamala wins, most will be forced to ditch their gas-powered cars. I like mine, thank you very much, for EVs. And, uh, or the Greeniacs have their way, there'll be no cars at all. That's the ultimate dream. So how is any of this pro-women? Now, female voters, I guess, are supposed to agree to a lower standard of living and unsafe streets and throw in perpetual war just because the Supreme Court returned the abortion decision to the states? Okay, someone has to explain that to me. How's that logical? The women who people like Mark Cuban look down on aren't one-issue voters. 
what's driving your vote? Um, I just think securing the border and uh, hopefully boosting our economy. I voted for Trump and uh, Trump 2024. I think he truly made America great in his last run, and I hope he can do it again. Farmers matter, automotive matters, Trump matters, and he's going to take care of the farmers and the automotive industry. Trump's supporting women. He's for women's rights and even fertility rights. And I like that he's um, against abortion and keeping our country safe. But Democrats and their media boosters are so flummoxed by Trump's staying power that they keep falling back on the F word. Even his wanting to protect women now is a threat. When you well, look at him as the protector, yeah. I'm not sure what he's talking about. It's kind of some he's sick, distorted, himself. fascist now, way. Me. Of course, most of these people don't believe that Trump is a threat to women, just like they don't believe he's a fascist or Hitler. They're just out of ideas. And actually, they're just out of gas. And they, all they can do is hope to scare enough women to push Kamala and her terrible record over 270 electoral votes. And look, they have a lot of money. They may succeed. But you're supposed to take solace in stories like this. Right now, more women, Democrats say, and, dem and it looks like this is the case, than men are voting early, 55 to 45. But that also includes GOP women voters as well. So we'll see how things end up on Tuesday. But the trends now are obviously positive in favor of Trump. The most accurate poll of the 2020 cycle, Atlas Intel, has Trump up in six of the seven swing states right now, although the margins in some of them are very, very tight. Now, remember, Kamala signed off on a strategy to go light on policy and heavy on fear and smear during this campaign. And in the end, they went all in on January 6th and fascism with a touch of your garbage, courtesy of Biden. She repeatedly lies about the abortion issue to frighten women. And of course, the press isn't going to fact check her. But Trump, he answered her by smiling at the McDonald's drive through by having fun taking reporters questions in a garbage truck and by forging on undaunted. So confident that he's keeping states like New Mexico and Virginia in play. But remember, Kamala and her surrogates don't think women voters need to hear solutions on inflation or the border, only abortion fear mongering. Now, which candidate insults and patronizes women again? And that's the angle. Now, we should note that Mark Cuban tweeted out a clarification earlier today, noting that there are strong, intelligent women who support Trump. But his comment is in line with the personal nastiness going all the way back to Hillary's deplorables comment. It's a very spooky Halloween, especially if you're Kamala, the ghost of Joe Biden haunting the Harris campaign. Garbage I see floating out there is his supporters. Democrats thought Hyden Biden would keep him out of trouble. But for some reason, Binder handed Joe a laptop and he somehow did more damage with it than Hunter. I've watched Trump already seize this. I, the, the basket of deplorables was significant, was meaningful in 2016. In 2024, I can promise you that this is going to drive Trump turnout. The media knows comments like this swing elections. USA Today says Biden's comment reminds us he has no business being president. Democrats were already wetting the bed before garbage gate. Now they're pointing fingers at each other, and the election isn't even over. One anonymous Democrat member of Congress who's up for re-election says someone needs to park Biden out of sight until after the election. Other Democrats are grumbling that Joe should never have run for re-election in the first place. And the party shouldn't have crowned Kamala. They should have had a regular primary where someone more moderate could have been nominated. Democrats have stopped caring about tiptoeing around the big guy. One Democrat tells the New York Times, we're way past the need to be concerned about the president's feelings. If the Harris campaign feels the need to distance themselves, they should feel free to do so. But Biden isn't going down without a fight. And neither is Hunter, the first son, who's facing years in prison for tax and gun charges, is bitter that Kamala stole his daddy's job. Hunter says if Kamala doesn't win, it could be the end of America as we know it. Now, Hunter needs a partner. So if I were him, I wouldn't be getting on anyone's bad side. Just sell your paintings and lay low. 
Biden's people think Joe should be running. Or if he's not running, at least be campaigning with Kamala. He should be out there. The reason she's where she is is because of him. Biden says, don't point the finger at me, point him at Kamala. And some Democrats already are. Obama's people are leaking that she looks really silly for not picking Shapiro. Would I want to have a beer with Walls? Absolutely. But let's face it, he wasn't a great choice. One Democrat says all the sniping, just Democrats trying to cover their asses and get a little ahead of election day. But really, they're just disappointed in Harris. They're admitting she has a messaging problem. And she keeps talking about Trump and not the economy, stupid. Oh, and Bill Clinton? Not helping. You did pretty well when I was president, and I think I'm entitled to my opinion about who'd be better. I don't think it's right to say that people have to vote for Donald Trump because the economy was better there. I don't believe that. Bill just said Trump's economy was better than Kamala's. And this is a week after he said Lake and Riley would be alive if the border czar would have done her job. The Clintons are like, uh, if Hillary can't be the first female president, no one can. The vibes are off. Yesterday, Kamala got heckled at three rallies in a row. Watch. Donald Trump's answer to financial pressures is for you to face the same deal. And I pledge to you, I will listen to experts. I will listen to those impacted by the decisions I make. And to people who disagree with me. An opportunity in, you know, hey, you know what? Listen, we all want the war in Gaza to end and get the hostages out. So the Democrat base is just as fractured as the party brass. How are they going to unify the country if they can't even unify themselves? Even Morning Joe is breaking down. The hypocrisy, Mika, over, <laughs> over uh, uh, a misstatement by Joe Biden, which he yeah. quickly corrected, uh, is, is so laughable because this guy does this every day. And then you turn on Fox News and say, oh, how could anybody do this? I've never seen this before. Yeah. <laughs> Seeing Trump put on a safety vest and hop in a garbage truck, fried their noggins. Kamala grew up in a middle-class family and Trump's the one in trucks and drive throughs It's got to be driving them nuts. She's campaigning with rich celebrities and Trump's at the barbershop with cops and firefighters. What the hell happened to the Democrat Party? The Bidens have offshore bank accounts and Trump's winning the union vote. The party of Hollywood can't even produce a moment, not a single moment. But Trump, the reality star, is directing his own blockbuster from the sidewalk, from the mugshot to the gunshot, from the McDonald's apron to the garbage vest. These are four of the most iconic pictures in presidential campaign history. And they all came from this campaign. Trump's dancing down the home stretch because the people are turning out. Republicans have been registering voters in big, huge numbers. They have been gaining in party registration versus the Democrats in the swing states with party registration. We're talking Arizona. How about Nevada? Big Republican registrations there. They like the early vote. How about North Carolina? Big Republican registration games. How about Pennsylvania? We spoke about it before a few months ago. Big Republican party registration gains versus where, where, from where they were four years ago. So the bottom line is, if Republicans win, Come next week, Donald Trump wins comes next week. The signs all along will have been obvious. We would look at the right direction being very low, Joe Biden's approval rating being very low, and Republicans really registering numbers. You can't say you weren't warned. The race is tight, but Democrats are anxious because black turnout's down, mail-in ballots are down, and Republicans are coming out strong for the early vote. You can feel the energy and the momentum in the air. It reminds me so much of 2016, and I think there are a lot of similarities right now between this campaign and that campaign. The divisions in the country were significant back then. People didn't think Trump had a chance back then. I don't know who's going to win. However, the momentum is clearly, in, my, in what I see and what I hear, is in his favor. And just like in 2016, the Democrats are running on hoaxes instead of their record. You hope to learn. New hoax alert. New hoax alert. So last night in Wisconsin, Trump said he wanted to protect women from migrant crime, whether they like it or not. 
Kamala has imported criminal migrants from prisons and jails, from insane asylums and mental institutions all over the world, from Venezuela to the Congo, including savage criminals who assault, rape, and murder our women and girls. Anyone who would let monsters kidnap and kill our children does not belong anywhere near the Oval Office. And my people told me about four weeks ago, I was saying, no, I want to protect the people. I want to protect the women of our country. I want to protect the women. Sir, please don't say that. Why? They said, we think it's, we think it's very inappropriate for you to say, so why? I'm president. I want to protect the women of our country. They said, they said, sir, I just think it's inappropriate for you to say, pay these guys a lot of money. Can you believe it? I said, well, I'm going to do it whether the women like it or not. I'm going to protect them. <laughs> Kamala took this and twisted it. They said, sir, I just think it's inappropriate for you to say. I said, well, I'm going to do it whether the women like it or not. I'm going to do it whether the women like it or not. 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 I'm going to do it whether the women like it or not. <laughs> Trump says... He wants to protect women from migrant killers, whether the women voted for him or not. And Kamala's campaign says Trump's going to control women, whether they like it or not. It was almost as dirty of an edit as 60 Minutes, and it's going to incite Democrats to violence. Watch. It's comments like he's going to take care of women, whether they like it or not, that just makes you clench your fist. It makes me clench my fist. I want to smack him across the face. Um, he's not taking care of me or my body. Hmm. Would Democrat women rather be assaulted by migrants than protected by Trump? Because I'm having a hard time understanding the logic. If wanting to protect women is an insult, then you can kiss civilization goodbye. We don't have to invent insults around here. We can just listen to the Democrats talk. Mark Cuban just called Republican women stupid. Donald Trump, you never see him around strong, intelligent women, ever. It's just that simple. They're intimidating to him. He, does, he doesn't like to, to be challenged by them. The party that can't even define a woman is saying women for Trump are dumb. They say the smart ones lie to their husbands and secretly vote for Harris. And the real men lie to their friends about voting Trump. They say Doug Emhoff lifts women up and Tampon Tim's a man's man. And if you don't vote for Harris, you ain't black. The party running on solving problems and bringing the country together is calling the country dumb Nazi garbage who should lie to their friends and family. And this is after they lied to you about COVID, inflation, the border, and the president's mental state. This election is about who do you trust to take out the trash? A woman who has a record of making a mess or a man with a record of fixing things? Thank you. Your appreciation underwhelms me. Happy Thursday, everyone. Today is Halloween, and I'm really starting to panic. I need three more guys to fill out the ass of my Joy Behar costume. <laughs> but everyone's getting dressed up. James Carville is going as a blind mole rat. <laughs> Elizabeth Warren is going as one of her ancestors. Kamala Harris will be dressing up as a Hispanic, Black, Asian, Puerto Rican, Jamaican, Muslim, and Jewish woman. <laughs> Hillary Clinton going as Monica Lewinsky with hopes to get laid. <laughs> David Muir, Nora O'Donnell, and Dana Bash will all be going as journalists. <laughs> and last but not least, Nancy Pelosi is ugh, going as herself. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing scarier than that. All right. <laughs> so while Arnold Schwarzenegger endorsed Kamala Harris, legendary astronaut Buzz Aldrin endorsed Donald Trump. So, pretty, pretty similar stories. One landed on the moon, the other one landed on his maid. <laughs> but you can see why Arnold went with Kamala. She said she would clean house if elected, and he can't resist a lady holding a mop.
Last night, rioters descended on Los Angeles after the Dodgers won the World Series, where many of these rioters first learned that the Dodgers won the World Series. That's such a great point. It's just a coincidence. Two LA erupted into chaos with looters raiding a Nike store and a mob burning a bus. Things are so bad the Menendez brothers are now demanding to stay in prison. <laughs> And President Biden bit a baby dressed as a chicken at a White House Halloween party. Well, now who's the cannibal? His doctor said they're just glad the baby wasn't dressed as a thermometer. <laughs> so disgusting. But just a joke. So what do you do when somebody calls you garbage? Of course it matters if it's from someone whose opinion you value, like your spouse or your relative or that Chinese lap dancer I met in Croatia. But what if it's coming from this guy? I mean, this guy thinks you're garbage? The guy who didn't even acknowledge he had a grandchild because she came from the wrong side of the tracks? To him, she was garbage, which kind of makes him garbage. And yet Joe called Trump supporters garbage. And the next day, Trump showed up for a campaign event asking the media one question. How do you like my garbage truck? How do you like my garbage truck? This truck is in honor of Kamala and Joe Biden. Joe Biden should be ashamed of himself if he knows what he's even doing. I hope you enjoy this garbage truck. We enjoy it. So Trump call, Joe calls Trump supporters garbage. Trump shows up for a campaign event in a garbage truck. I wonder what would happen if Biden had called them d <laughs> Would Trump have showed up in this? Yeah, he would. You know he would. He would. So why does this moment matter? Well, first, the same media that went insane over a comedian's joke about a trash crisis in a U.S. territory now views Biden calling half the country garbage a hoax. The very same news media that ignored all the times Donald Trump has called American citizens and American voters scum and garbage actually tried to turn Joe Biden's use of the word garbage into a controversial news story today. He landed in Green Bay just a short time ago and then pulled this campaign stunt speaking to reporters from a garbage truck. Proof that he and his supporters are giving no grace to a gaffe by President Biden, where he, in his explanation, inadvertently called Trump supporters garbage. You see that? Inadvertently. Like, that was inadvertent. Like when I inadvertently landed on that candlestick. <laughs> <laughs> but sure, the garbage line could be misconstrued. Been there. But do we owe them that grace, as Nora suggests? Hell no. After all, Biden wrote in on the most divisive lie ever, the fine people hoax, which was thoroughly debunked. Worse, it was the tentpole hoax that initiated the Trump is Hitler narrative that they've been pushing ever since. It was divisive, destructive, and even when they knew it was false, they kept at it. So forgive me if I don't give a f if Biden just got fine people hoaxed. What's good for the goose is good for the slander. So while Joe's biting babies, Trump is chewing up Kamala's campaign like a toddler dressed as a Big Mac. <laughs> but there's a bigger problem. Whether you're called irredeemable, deplorable, or garbage, the rot is coming from the top. And it's undermining the fabric of the social contract. It's not team sport politics. I got no problems with tribes, allegiances, clubs, even cults. Hell, I had Scientologists as neighbors, and they were always willing to invite me over for a threesome. Because there was always a bedrock premise underneath it. It's the cheesiest phrase ever, love thy neighbor. It's corny because we get it wrong. When we hear love thy neighbor, we think of Ned Flanders offering a high diddly ho neighborino to Homer. But love thy neighbor doesn't matter when things are good, only, only when it's bad. And if Kamala wins, you both may have to fend off roving gangs of transgendered Venezuelans with student loan debt. That societal agreement is no different than the First or the Second Amendment. They don't exist for hello and goodbye. It's for bad words and bad hombres, which means no matter who you root for, you're still neighbors. If you're a Yankees fan and you live next to a Red Sox fan, don't sit near each other a game. Actually, you may both want to avoid both those cities. 
But you can still borrow the leaf blower, but then return the favor by leaving your blinds open when you undress. <laughs> but love thy neighbor became immoral once radicals made the political personal. In the 60s, the left's most heralded voices declared that every relationship is one of power between boss and worker, husband and wife, white and black, even me and my pool boy. I keep telling him someday I'll get a pool. <laughs> Suddenly, the equality of connection turns vertical. It's no longer we're in this together. It's now who's on top. They changed love thy neighbor into love thy neighbor unless we disagree. The relationship is transactional, but not based on neighborly stuff. But now your neighbor won't talk to you if you're voting for Trump. Now, I know, do you really want a jerk like that in your life anyways? But that's where calling half the country Nazi garbage gets you. You end up in a place where it's harder and harder to return to loving one's neighbor when the media and their team calls them trash. My advice, get your lawn tools back before Tuesday. Let's welcome! Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.